again. Live again. Let me start my chat on my laptop. Here we are. All right, cool. We're going. Let's see. Let some folks file in. And I will pick out a pipe. I will pick out a pipe. Yo, yo, Extra Pint Podcast. Welcome. Um, what am I going to smoke? You know what? I will smoke my Series 3, 320. Because I got these back in stock finally. I got a little bit of oxidation on this bad boy. I've smoked this one, I would guess, about two years now. Time to clean it up if and when I ever get to it. Um, should be able to get that off with some stem cleaner. Very easily. It's not super gunky yet. Oh, let's see. Get back to my comments. Hot Rod Bob, Piper said said, Randy D, Pipecast, Kev the Granite City Piper. Hey man. Oh, I feel like I got a sneeze coming on. Justin LeMay, Inverted 311, Free Piper Skip. Rock Rider. Nice. Alright, we got some folks filing in. So, let me get a, uh, I'm going to use a Peterson filter in my Savinelli 9mm pipe. Don't tell anybody. But they're pretty much interchangeable. Um, well, one thing I forgot to do is one thing I forgot to do is turn on Do Not Disturb. Sorry about that. Yardism, welcome. And Boca de Boynton. All right. Um, we could do Windjammer, but I've been smoking a good bit of Windjammer this week. This is a, a newer pipe blend that I'm going to start carrying. Bridge Mixture. This one's got all kinds of stuff in it. Pretty much what I would call a kitchen sink blend. This is a nice ribbon cut. I can make out the dark fired. But it's not, there's not a ton of dark fired in here, but it's enough to pick out. I do believe there's also Black Cavendish and Virginia's and Burleys. Let's see what it says. Crossover blend. That's that's a euphemism for kitchen sink blend. <laughs> uh, bright and red Virginias with Turkish, Latakia, Perique, Cavendish, and a touch of dark fired Kentucky. So yeah, definitely what I would call a kitchen sink blend. If you can't decide what you're in the mood for, this might be a good one. If you like all that stuff, which I do in varying uh, proportions. Um, expecting any Captain Earl's Night Watch soon. Soon. Maybe by the weekend. Maybe by the weekend. But it's hard to say. I mean, it's been back ordered, so just whenever it comes back in stock, it'll ship to me. All briared up, welcome.
Um, who said that? Chris writes, copy. Yeah, the Windjammer is really, really good. And as I said, I've been kind of comparing it with um, Black Frigate and Blockade Runner as well as... What was the other one? I forget now. It escapes me. But I'll be carrying the Windjammer into the future as well as Blockade Runner and Black Frigate. Those are going to be two new blends to me that are both rum, uh, rum topped or rum cased. I do believe these are all rum cased. They, they get the navy treatment. All right. And as I said, the 329 millimeters are back in stock. Glad you can make it too, all briared up. I think I'm getting a little better at these. <laughs> so maybe you only miss some growing pains. All right, let's light up. I have a feeling I was overzealous in packing this. It's going to bloom up a bit much. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to this hemp uh, rope or hemp wick. Um, this is whatever brand that Stuffin' Things um, got some to review. That was some time back. Kind of the beautiful thing about this is I can sit it and let it burn while I tamp. Because one thing about these 320s is they're wide bold, so it takes a bit more time to get them really going evenly. That's got it. We'll set that to the side. I cannot remember the brand name, but I, I picked that hemp wick off, up off Amazon. And I don't use it a ton. Typically a match or two will do it, but um, for the 320s, they tend to take a bit more. All right, we're going good now. 43 in the house. Brown Leaf Beardsman, welcome. Cliff Higgins. <laughs> Hippie Pipe Smoking 101, thanks Cliff. I 
I don't know too many hippies who smoke bridge mixture. It may be that stereotypical of me to say. All right, I do have the shag going on. Sorry about that, you guys. We're just gonna roll with it. I do not know about pipe tobacco stores in Canada. I don't know. I've been, been to Canada once in my life, just across Niagara Falls. Smoking pipes ships to Canada for cheap. What do they charge to ship to Canada, I wonder? Yeah, Steph and Skip, most of the shops I stop in at anywhere near Pensacola, Florida, and I'm talking Mobile, you know, South Alabama, to the, to the east of me, You know, Destin, Florida, Panama City. Most places that say they're pipe shops or have the word pipe in them, they're typically head shops. Sell the little glass pipes, if you know what I mean. Which I'm just not into. Five dollars per ten. That's the shipping fee, five dollars per ten. I'm sure smoking pipes is like me, and any import duties would definitely be on you know the responsibility of the receipt the recipient. Okay, or O. Kendrick Piper, currently at work. We won't tell anybody. You're listening in. First class USPS is about 14. Typically that's what I see shipping to Canada depending on depending on the size of the box. International shipping is usually between 15 and $25. So I do a flat $20 shipping fee to uh, to Canada to cover my bases. Sometimes I wind up footing a bit of that bill, and sometimes it's a little cheaper, so it evens out. Let's see, what do we got? What do I think about Brigham pipes? Um, I'm. I think they're decent pipes. Um, 
but that, um, you know, I think they're decently constructed, especially for their price range. Good grief. You can get Brigham pipes pretty cheap, but um, that rock maple distillator system, it just doesn't work for me. I still um, have issues with tongue bite when I smoke a Brigham. Um, that's why I haven't, as of yet, decided to carry Brigham, because I just, I can't, they don't work for me. Uh, but then again, I, I carry unfiltered pipes, uh, which, you know, I have a hard time smoking, so. But for a new pipe smoker, I would always recommend them to start with a 9mm charcoal filter. Um, and go from there. Sniper Mac, what, what poster are you talking about? The one directly behind me? This way or this way? Makes you want to watch Goonies again. Can't can't ever go wrong with Goonies. My kids don't enjoy it as much as I do, but uh, I still love it. Yep, the six millimeter charcoal filters work great in a in a corn cob. Absolutely. Oh, the matter of life and death one. Um, I'll grab it in a second, man. All right, let's see. Where's that? Oh, this guy fell down. Alright, somebody wanted to see this poster a little bit more up close. This is my G.I. Joe poster. Here we go. It's the uh, album art for Iron Maiden's A Matter of Life and Death. Not going to be able to get it really in the shot very good. But there we go. Tankalicious. Looks. I don't know what kind of tank that is. It looks like it could be. Um, it looks, you know, it looks kind of like World War II era, but that turret's so covered up. It's got some kind of canopy on it. It's hard to say. But anyway, really cool poster. Really cool album art. Let's put that back up. There we go. I know I've got tons of chat to catch up on now.
Igor, Igor, I can't vouch for that. I'm sure somewhere else people don't act like idiots, but pipe chats are nice, typically. Paul the Piper, you asked me if I'm selling them. Do you mean the poster? If not, I don't sell the posters, but um, maybe you were talking about something else. Yeah, there's a lot of World War II in that album, but um, thanks for sharing. Thanks, Alyssa. That's my daughter. Um, I don't sell posters, and most of these posters I got at either the local video game store or off Amazon, in the case of the music and movie ones, or the music one. Sixty-nine in the house, and only sixteen thumbs up. Thumb ups, thumbs ups. Be sure to hit that like button. Or the dislike button. I'm I'm easy. As long as I garner a reaction. I don't have any Farrah Fawcett posters. <laughs> I, uh, it's kind of a joke in my family. I used to have a Johnny Depp poster from 21 Jump Street that I literally kept in my closet. Uh, <laughs> my wife didn't want to see it because it was Johnny Depp with a ripped up shirt and skull earrings and, you know, I think scarves on his wrists and all kinds of crazy stuff chains and rings and all kinds of stuff so she didn't like it so I hung it in the the inside door of my closet so when I opened my closet I could see Johnny Depp from 21 Jump Street era That was many years ago, by the way. That was still 21 Jump Street had been off the air for quite some time. I think I picked that one up off eBay. Pipes and cigars in France. We all are doing good. At least everyone here in Gray Manor. I brought out a adult beverage and didn't even pour it. Gonna have some of one of my very favorite beers tonight, some Elysian Space Dust IPA. Pour this over ice as uh, I unpopularly do. But it is pretty high gravity for a, for a beer. I think 8.2%. 8.2, yep. Almost what I would call an Imperial IPA. Tim, believe it or not, 10 days, I'm glad you got the package, but 10 days um, is probably average right now for USPS shipments. I really hope things get back to normal soon. I've heard reports, even after the holidays, I've heard reports of some people taking upwards of three to four weeks to get their packages. Um, that was the case during the holiday shipping, and then just because of the crazy weather lately, um, things got super backed up. 
things are flowing through now, but I, I know there are a couple of people who ordered around February 12th that still haven't gotten their packages yet. And then some packages just go straight through in three to five days. It's luck of the draw. Just depends on the route it's going to take to get from me to you. Mr. Pipe Nut. <laughs> yeah, well, we just talked about the mailing delays. Yeah, I must have read your mind. Yeah, well, you know, the 6mm charcoal filters have been around from White Elephant for some time, Randy, but um, the Savinelli ones are new to the market just this past month. Month and a half, something like that. All right. Good night. All briared up. Have a good one. Enjoy your night out. I tell you what, um, one of my good friends took me um, out on my birthday back in January. And that's the one and only time I've sat down and eaten in a restaurant in a year. Crazy. Saving a lot of money though. Um, but we've, we've been doing a good bit of takeout, but that's the one time this whole past 12 months that I've eaten out in a restaurant. Uh-oh. Berlin Nut Bob's here. Welcome. Igor, I, I don't know why, how or why Savinelli priced them that way. The white elephant ones are definitely cheaper, but um, overall I would say most people prefer the Savinelli ones um, because of a better, it, it, they do have a better draw. Smoking KY Piper. Oh, Alyssa wants to know where's our special guest. We'll get to that. Our special guest is napping off camera.
Um, Patrick C., what pipe do you have a, and what filter are you using that it's sliding up the stem when you take a draw? What pipe are we talking about and, and what filter? That give me a little bit. I, I would never recommend putting scotch tape or anything else <laughs> around your filter. Glenn, my barber is alive and well, but we're not really on speaking terms at the moment. Tim, you, you called it. We've got a, a new dog. Not a puppy. Well, she's about a year old. But she's a rescue dog that we just adopted this past weekend. Just got her on Sunday, so we've only had her for three and a half days. And she's a bit timid still. She's not real sure. Like, are, what do these people mean to do to me? And... Am I sticking around any length of time? That, that kind of thing. Yeah, a six millimeter filter and a nine millimeter pipe, that would do it. You'd have a loose filter then, for show. Well, Surly Swede, I'm, I'm probably also a rescue husband, if that's the case. <laughs> the problem with introducing our guest tonight, our new dog, is that she probably, once I get her in the shot, she probably won't want to come out of the shot. Kilted Piper Steve, I'm doing well. Riley. We're just over the halfway mark, so you, we got some time. Glad you made it. I don't know, maybe the Lorenzetti's just not, maybe they drilled it too deep. That's all I can think. Um, the Savinelli's and the Rattrays that I carry, I haven't had that problem in any of them that I've added to my personal collection. Uh, and I haven't had any complaints either, so. Um, same with the Dublin filter pipes. Now, I have had a couple that were drilled too shallow, um, and I had to send them back because uh, people complained that, you know, the stem shank wouldn't fit together because there just wasn't enough room to accommodate. But that's rare. So I, I don't know, uh, Patrick, if it's a fairly newer pipe, you might want to look into returning it. Uh, if it's really drilled that, uh, that loose. Sounds like it's misdrilled. Took a little too much out. I did want to tell you guys, these Savinelli um, colored tampers, mine's filthy because I use it all the time. I think I may be out of the blue. I'm not sure. 
but all of these Savinelli colored tampers are going away. They've been discontinued. So if you want one uh, in whatever colors I've got still available, you might want to grab them. They do have a, a pick that screws off. But pretty much I use a pipe nail to clean out you know to pick out my dawdle I just use this one as a tamper but for whatever reason that's the tamper I gravitate to the most Delta you awake? you awake? The people want to see you. Come here. I'll see if we can get you in the shot. Come here. Come here. Big stretch. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, there she is. There's Delta. Hey, baby. Hey, baby girl. I don't know if she's gonna smile for the camera, but this is our this is our new addition here. We're not exactly sure what she is, but I can tell you she's part jackrabbit. Hey you. But she's our new shop dog. Um, she's white in this light brown color. Got a little brown spot in this white river that goes down her nose and across her head. She got white on her chest. In the face, she looked kind of like a beagle, but in body, she's like a, a skinny lab. And when she, I mean, she's like on a 15 minute timer. If she's not sleeping, she wants to be in my lap. Yeah, she's a sweetie. Her name is Delta. Um, whoever found her and took her to the rescue shelter found her along the docks in Mobile, Alabama. And somehow she wound up over here at a rescue in Pensacola. But she was half starved. She's still really skinny and very pregnant. Um, but they, they fixed her up, the rescue center fixed her up with a foster family and, uh, that keeps foster dogs until they're adopted. They kept her until she had her puppies and weaned off her puppies. Um, then they had her fixed and we adopted the mommy. My wife wanted the mommy. She didn't want the puppies, but she's housebroken. Um, real timid, so I don't know if she was yelled at or hit a lot. I'm not real sure. Um, you just never know with a rescue dog, but uh, she's a sweetheart. And this is the first dog we've had in 15 years. So, there you go. Thank you. That's her cameo for the evening. Um... Sometimes she'll, she jumps in, you know, she puts her head up in my lap a lot like that. Sometimes she just jumps in my lap. So I've got a 30 pound dog in my lap. <laughs> it doesn't work very well. All right, let's see what I missed in chat. We got 73 in the house, y'all. Yeah, 
No, she's coming back. Hey, girl. But that's my new shop dog. My new pipe nook mascot. Delta. That's why they named her Delta, because they found her along the, the Delta in Mobile. Hey, you. Let's see if I can pan down a little bit. She's back in my lap. No. Not enough. Not enough. What are you doing? So, I'm having to get used to having dog hair all over me again. But, um, growing my hair out kind of got me used to having hair all over my shirts anyway. <laughs> She's a real quiet dog until somebody you know, rings the doorbell or something like that. But she doesn't go nuts like, like a lot of dogs do. She's fairly quiet. She has torn up a, f a couple of things already. Um, she tore up a plush dog toy. Tried to get the, tried to get the squeaker out. And we put a kitchen mat down just under my table here so she can lay at my feet and not lay on the concrete. Eventually, I think I'm going to put a rug out here in this particular area. But I'm a little concerned about that now because she's already torn up the, the kitchen mat. So I think I'm going to start calling her Delta Force. <laughs> Because she cuts a path of destruction. It's not exactly surgical, though. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Yeah, Boca, I agree. If she wants to tear up her own stuff, that's fine, but... Once she tears up this kitchen mat, it's not going to make me want to buy a rug. Another movie you have not seen. You talking about Delta Force? Alyssa? Wasn't Delta Force a movie? I tried to look it up today. Seems like it was an 80's movie action film and it had like Louis Gossett Jr. or some somebody in it if you guys know let me know in chat I need to look it up Ryder this is a 320 I'm smoking right here 321 is a bit smaller than that I wish they had 321s on the Series 3. That would be great. But so far, they don't. Yeah, I know, Cliff. I used to have a couple of dogs early on in our marriage. Those were our babies before we started having babies. You gonna get down? You wanna get down? But yeah, they, and we both worked full time, so we had to leave them at home alone. We kept them in one room. It was the dog room in our first house. Um, and uh, once they learned they could jump over the baby gate, which, I mean, we got them as puppies, so they never knew they could jump over the baby gate. 
and I'm talking a golden retriever and a yellow lab. But then one day it fell down when they jumped up on it to say hi. <laughs> and man, it was game on from there. We came home all the time and they had torn up, you know, shoes and clothes and gotten into the trash and ripped up papers and all kinds of stuff. So I, I pretty much decided I wasn't ever going to have another dog until I could be home with the dog a lot more. Because I don't want to just crate a dog all day long. But um, And our, our fence is kind of rickety. It's not like I could keep her in the backyard all the time. That's going to be a pricey repair that we'll need to do at some point. It's kind of strange though because when we moved into this house, we bought this house as a new construction and uh, all of the neighbors, our lot was still a wooded lot, the neighbors all around us had already built out and so they put up all the fencing. All we did was enclose the two sides to meet the fence that was already there. So, you know, three different neighbors put up three different sides of our fence. Um, so it would be kind of weird to just replace it. I need to talk to all them. But that's sometime in the future. I'm surprised, uh, well, one of the sides, our back fence, blew down during this last hurricane. Um, the other two sides stayed up, and I just have no idea how. Because the wind was blowing east to west, and that's the eastern and western fences. For some reason, the southern fence blew down. Lee Marvin and Chuck Norris was in Delta Force? Okay. I gotta look that up because I don't recall ever since. I remember 1986. I even could recall it was from 86. The Delta Force. Interesting. Okay. Yep, but I, I don't recall ever seeing it. Chuck Norris, the Delta Force. All right, that's going on the movie list. Ah. All right. But as far as Delta Force tearing up um, personal property or uh, inventory, have no fear, Pipe Nook's inventory is behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. Yeah. Not for you. Pipes are not chew toys. <laughs> the first time you chew up one of my pipes, we're gonna have a problem. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing to me? Goodness. Ah. Uh. Lee Marvin and Chuck Norris. It's nice. What, girl? I cannot pay attention to you 100% of my life. I'm so sorry. Oh, here we are with the Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> I'll tell you my favorite Chuck Norris uh, joke. Um, Chuck Nor when Chuck Norris uh, donates blood, he brings a pistol and a bucket. You know, uh, Cliff, I have a total gym too, believe it or not. I don't use it as much as I should. Not on the reg. Oh, my kiddo's 17. Like, she's heard it all. Sometimes from me. <laughs> Alyssa, I'm not a huge Chuck Norris fan, but we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll at least watch the Delta Force. 
All right, get down. Thank you. All right, walk, walk away. Let's get this pipe reel up. Andrew, I'm not even going to try to change your mind about buying an author. I mean, they're, the author is my second favorite. It, it used to be my very favorite pipe shape. Still my favorite Savinelli pipe, but it's been replaced. It's been dethroned by this uh, Beltane's Fire Pipe shape from Rattray's. Man, I love this pipe. But the author is no slouch. I have three of them at the moment. They are for extended smokes. I could probably smoke a 320, depending on the tobacco, anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Like I said when I was lighting this, they are a bit more difficult to light because of the wide mouth of the bowl. This is a 0.9 inch on most 320s. Almost a full inch. Let me bring y'all up. There we go. So the only talking point I got to, I'm trying to keep a list of things through the week that I might want to talk about on the live stream, because even when I do canned videos, there are some things I want to talk about that I kind of throw into my, to my canned videos, but typically people don't want to hear that in a canned video. That's what the live streams are for. I can ramble on about any and, any and all topics. And, you know, the, the live stream is a good format for that. But, you know, when I title something, you know, six millimeter pipe filters and, and why they're, why you should use them or, you know, whatever. And then I ramble on for five minutes before I get to the meat. Uh, that's a format that I'm trying to break from. So that, um, and the live streams are helping with that, so that when I make uh, canned videos, I can stay on target. So I'm keeping a list of topics I want to talk about. I'll just jot down on that list through the week. And that's going to be my new MO, I think. Long form uh, meandering pipe chats in the live stream and then more focused um, topics in my canned videos. So if you guys haven't subscribed and that sounds appealing, why don't you go ahead and subscribe. And I'm hoping to make more videos. Good grief, I'm just so busy right now. As soon as I can let the day job go and I can devote myself to the pipe nook 100%, More videos will be forthcoming. More social media presence will be forthcoming. I might even tack on a second live stream a week. We still got 68 in the house at the hour mark. Thanks for hanging in there, guys.
soldiering through. Igor, what typically used to happen is that I would press record, say what I'm smoking, talk a little about, about the pipe and the tobacco, and then whatever floats into my head I started talking about. So what I thought would be a topic for a five-minute video turned into a 15-minute video, and that happened all the time. And... <clears throat> You guys didn't complain. Well, some of you complain. <laughs> um, but most people didn't. But I'm just going to do my best to stay more focused on those canned videos. That was before I did live streams. So uh, that was really my only outlet to talk about stuff to you guys. But that's all changed now. Chad, I want to have you on um, at some point. I don't know if we'll do the live stream or we can we can do it um, offline and then I can upload it. But let's do a Zoom call sometime. I, I really want to dig into your backstory a bit. Um, and you may have talked about all the stuff I would want to ask you on your own channel. But, you know, it's hard for me to keep up with everybody's videos. I'm sure you, you know that. Um, and we don't get to talk a whole lot, so I think that would be cool. I definitely want to hone in on the, on the Muscle Shoals days. I thought this went out, but it didn't. Another person I want to talk to long form like that is uh, Mike from Briar Blues. I saw on, on uh, I'm subscribed to his uh, newsletter. While I'm celebrating my fifth year in business as the Pipe Nook, he is celebrating his 25th year as Briar in, as uh, being in business as Briar Blues. That just boggles my mind. A quarter of a century? I had no idea. Honestly, guys, I just didn't know. I didn't know how long he'd been business, in business. I knew longer than me, but good grief. 25 years? I need to pick his brain because I want that kind of longevity for the pipe nook. Oh, there, there you are, Mike. <laughs> so, yeah, Mike, I was saying, I, I want to have a Zoom call with you and, and interview you, um, learn a, a little bit more about you personally and, and have it out there for the YTBC. But definitely we're going to talk about the 25 uh, years in business. And I would love to talk to you offline sometime um, just for some business uh, advice. Because even at five years, I'm, I'm a complete newbie compared to 25 years in business. Lurking Mike strikes again. Yeah, I'm glad I was speaking well of you. <laughs> Well, if he's the Baron, you guys keep in mind, I'm, I'm still the Prince of Pipes.
That didn't stick as well as I wanted it to. Uh, but I, I guess I'll just be the self-proclaimed Prince of Pipes. Whoever started calling Derek Tant the mayor? I know we had fun with it in Nashville at a couple of the, the pipe meetups, but I don't know who started it. I don't know if we started it there or if that came about some other way. Mike, you can uh, disclose your skeletons or not as you please. I'm, you know, I'm not a hard-edged uh, news reporter, <laughs> so I, w I won't dig if you don't want me to dig. I'll let you, I'll let you lead for the most part. Duke of Darkfire, that'd be a nice one. Good for you, Smoking KY. Someone else did call me the Prince of Pipes. I can't remember um, if it was in a comment or on a live stream. Yeah, that dog, that dog of mine just cannot understand why I don't want her in my lap, you know, 16 hours a day. I was going to mention this too. I am on the market for health insurance. Health, life, dental. Because if I leave the day job, I'm going to have to find my own insurance and it's going to be costly. And I have very good health insurance right now. But if any of you have bumped up against this, and have any advice for me at all um, you know I'm a pipe smoker and I'm not gonna hide that fact particularly when my income comes from a business called the pipe nook for crying out loud so I know some insurance companies treat pipe smokers or smokers of any kind the same and some insurance companies supposedly treat it different if you guys have any positive information as to that, hit me up uh, via email or my contacts page with uh, the name of an agent. I'm working on getting one quote now, but I'm a little scared. Well, Igor, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie about it if they ask me. Now, if it comes down to, you know, them not even really asking me, but just having me take a test, then I'll just not smoke for a week or two. So I don't have any nicotine in my system.
because as a pipe smoker, I can do that, you know? That's the thing that, one of the many things that the medical industry doesn't seem to understand. But I am not a health professional or legal professional, and this is not legal or health advice. Purely my opinion. Paul the Piper, you're probably right about this pooch. There are five people in this family that just adore that dog. I think it's a, a good match. Brian, I'm glad you got it. Or did you get it? Maybe you haven't. Yeah, Andrew, I, there are times when I definitely uh, am jealous of the Canadian healthcare system. Sweet, it is too late for me to join the army. Sorry. I did I did miss that and I um I, I'm not gonna say I regret not um joining the military of any kind. But it's definitely a decision I would have weighed more heavily uh if I could go back and talk to my 18 year old self. But back in the day, I just was not, was not interested. But I do have the utmost respect for those who uh, have served and are serving in our armed forces. Yeah, but the hair's here to stay, so... <coughs> Somebody, um... Excuse me. Somebody asked me earlier today or yesterday how old I was. I am 46 years old. So I do believe that's past the Army and Navy cutoff. And... The Air Force. Possibly not the National Guard, I'm not sure. That's what I thought, Brian. Yeah, I shipped it out today. Yeah, I'm also jealous of the TRICARE. Good grief. Um, but I didn't put in the time. Oh, dog's having a dream. She's just about a year old, so she still has those dreams where she kind of kicks while she's dreaming. But yeah, if I could go back, I'd think long and hard about becoming a, a career military person. Um, 20 years in, lifetime health insurance. VA loan. I could have retired at 38 and uh, started the pipe nook. 
and it wouldn't have been a problem at all. As it is, right now, I've worked up the pipe nook to where it's almost a full-time job. Almost a full-time income. So between that and the day job, I'm working 60 to 70 hours a week right now. So... This year is going to be a struggle, and I think I'm I'm at the tipping point. I worked at a music store here in town, primarily a guitar, you know, guitar, bass, drums store. Primarily guitar. They sold ukuleles and banjos and mandolins. Really, by the time I got done working there, I worked there a couple of years, and they were celebrating 20 years in business. But Jim DeStaffney, the man who started, it was called Blues Angel Music. Uh, he was a, a pilot trainer. And uh, trained the Blue Angels. And when he finally retired, he was probably in his 60s when he retired, 50-something, 60s. No, I would say he was in his 50s when he retired. He started uh, Blues Angel Music, and it was basically with his guitar and amp collection, his vintage guitar and amp collection. Started taking trade-ins, had a really small shop close to the Navy base here in town. Started buying used gear and then eventually started selling new gear. Then a piano store that had been in business for 30 plus years here in Pensacola. That guy and his wife decided to retire so they approached him about taking over. They were like, w you know, we don't want you to buy us out we want you to take over the business and we want to take care of our staff so we want you to just hire our staff do you think you can remodel to where you can carry the have a full piano room and they did they they figured it out made it happen while I was working there it was an amazing thing they lost more than half of their warehouse <laughs> to, to make that piano room, but it's gorgeous. And now they're by far the biggest music store in town, doing really well. Tyler, you're asking about the West Parlor. Uh, when it's summer, it would get, here in the West Parlor, it would get up to nine in the 90s. Um, but this past year, because I was working from home, and I'm working my day job from home now, still, and... Uh, my, you know, my long game is that I'll be working the pipe nook here 
out of, you know, my inventory's inside uh, in my closed door office, but, uh, you know, I do my shipping out here and all my answering emails and making my videos and all that kind of stuff. So I uh, paid to have a split vent installed. Uh, if you're not familiar with a split vent, it's like a miniature um, air unit. So I've got an inside unit up here on the wall. Um, there's just one drill through the brick to get to the outside unit. And uh, there's, there's a full, you know, mounted outside unit so we've got our main outside unit for the main AC on the other side of the house. And I've got this split vent here now. So uh, it stays, you know, and it heats and cools. So uh, definitely an expensive investment, but I am loving that thing. Right now, it's 75 degrees in here. And I don't know what it is outside, but I, I keep it between 70 and 75 in here year round now with that split vent so it could be 30 outside and it'd be 70 in here or 68 uh, or it could be 100 outside and it'd be like 75 77 maybe in here Not only that, it gives me a little bit of ventilation. You know, it takes air out and brings air in. I also have a uh, um, air purifier in here, but it's nice to have some kind of ventilation. I think I am to the bottom of this 320. No, those aren't tattoos on the wall. Those are uh, dragons. Do you pair the pipe ever with any cocktail or beer? Not a cocktail. I typically don't keep... Um, liquor around every now and then I'll get a bottle of rum and I, I don't get fancy with it I do rum and cokes I don't do a whole lot of mixed drinks but I do love beer um, craft beers in particular I don't really do pairings so much it's just whatever I'm in the mood for that day that I think might work well together um, so I don't really have any recommendations as to that and I'm not going to try to relight this again I am down to the very bottom we're in an, almost an hour and a half you guys um, so I'll be closing up shop here pretty soon See what else I got. I'm missing in chat. Fifty six in Pensacola and seventy five in here. Nice. to Piper Steve have a good night you're not gonna miss much we're about to sign off <laughs> wife time bye Greg
What state is the most tobacco friendly? I would have no idea, but if I had to hazard a guess, I would say Texas. Because they just seem to be the most freedom friend friendly. Um, I think if I lived anywhere else, it would probably be Texas. Oh, Cigar City makes really good beer, Tyler. Um, their Maduro, it's like a brown ale, really good. Invasion is a good IPA. High Lie is an excellent IPA. That's, that's in my top 10. Briar Gecko, have a good one. Andrew, <laughs> go, Igor, gonna go bother someone else. That's fine. All right, we're dropping out, you guys, or a lot of y'all are. So I guess I will do the same. Doug, I still feel like I'm in the middle stage. This hair drives me nuts on a daily basis. I'd like to get it probably, I think I'm going to get it about here eventually if I stick with it. Paul, thanks so much. And with that, we are going to sign off. I'll save my other talking points for uh, next week. So you guys, glad you stuck with me this long. And uh, we'll chat with you again next week, if not sooner. Have a good one.